What makes a legend? How does ordinary become extraordinary? How can I be legendary? Welcome to Legends Only. Cecilia Aldaba Lim Lazaro was born on September 8, 1945. A pillar of investigative journalism in the country, Cheche is the founding president of Probe Productions and was the host and producer of The Probe Team, the first investigative news magazine program in the Philippines. The winner of numerous awards, including the Silver World Medal at the New York Festival and a recipient of the Gawad Plaridel Award from the University of the Philippines. She was also the producer for pioneering TV programs like Five and Up, Game Plan, and Probe Profiles. She is a supportive wife, mother of two, and grandmother of one. How did Cheche Lazaro become Cheche Lazaro? Let's find out here on the final episode of Legends Only. Welcome to Legends Only, Cheche Lazaro. Hi, Bianca. This is so surreal for me. Thank you for saying yes to chat um, with me for this special series. My pleasure, my pleasure. So I wanted to start with this. I looked at the timeline of your career, Ma'am Cheche, and I realized this. So this past, I'd say, decade, there has been a fixation on achieving this by your 20s or being this by your 30s. But Probe, which is the core of your career and what you're most known for, is something you started in your 40s. Yes, that's true. So the be this by 20 and be this by 30 passed me by quickly because I was raising a family. I had begun my fam- my, my married life at that time. The media landscape was, was kind of crowded. There were a lot of stations that were already operating during that time and they were well established. I had lived abroad for a certain number of years. And by the time we got home, it was... Uh, martial law had just been declared. So there was this uh, huge change, you know, in the media landscape. So I first started uh, my local career by teaching at UP because that was the opportunity that was open then. No? When I was teaching during that time, my my, my feeling as a, as a teacher then was, alam mo, walang kwenta yung teacher na hindi pinapractice yung kanyang chosen career. Because felt, you were teaching... Broadcasting. I was teaching broadcasting in UP. My feeling then was, you know, it's like a surgeon. A surgeon who does not operate in the operating room cannot teach somebody else how to wield a scalpel if you have never done it on your own. Yes. How can you teach what's wrong and what's good and how to do stuff? So, yun yung feeling ko and it was a very antsy feeling that I had. You know, the only entry point at that time for when finally martial law was was lifted so all the stations were beginning to rev up again their news uh, departments were beginning to come alive again and i was really interested in news i was not on the entertainment side uh, i don't think i would have made it uh, in the entertainment side doing anything so i thought news like is what i want i watched 60 minutes i was a fan of 60 minutes and i thought what a great program what a way to tell a story. Initially, you know, I applied to the stations and the entry point there was to do the newscast, right? And I was rejected in all stations that I tried. The the pamantayan at that time was, I guess, how you looked or how you projected on TV. And perhaps I did not fit that, that mold, that template that they had. But again, in my mind, I said, you know, if I don't try, I'll never know. Of course, the rejections told me, no, you didn't make it. So what I did was the next idea that I had is I'm going to try and do a 60 minutes uh, Philippine version because I thought it, it was about the time. And again, during that time, talk shows, the likes of Don Puno, of Louis Beltran were the ones that were gaining audience attention because they were beginning to discuss issues that were not discussed when martial law mm-hmm. was forced, right? So I thought, hey, that's a great thing. But I think it would be nicer if there was a video element, if there's a story behind it, not just talking heads, but do a background check, lengthen the story, and make it more in-depth. Maybe that's more interesting. I formed a group. I got employed by ABS-CBN. I was made a uh, the head of public affairs at that time. We started this little group. That was the beginning of Probe. And it really came out of first the set of rejections and then coming into a station and a station allowing us to do investigative news magazine like Pro. Yeah, that's amazing. And I realized that even when I interviewed you before, it was really about your body of work with Pro. But if you would allow me, I'd like to backtrack a bit. 
And again, going to my 20s and 30s point, a lot of letters that I get now is more of like, I feel like I'm a failure kasi wala pa akong na-achieve at 20 or at 30. But usually, we realize that yun nga, the dots connect in the future. So I guess my question is, in your 20s and 30s, experiencing being a housewife when you're in the States, and then as a, uh, as a teacher in UP, and all the other things that you did, how did that prepare you, rev you up um, for your eventual um, career as a journalist? That's a good and tough question, Blanca. <laughs> to those who say, you know, I haven't achieved anything at 20s, don't despair, right? If I'm an example, I really revved up only at 40. But prior to that, my education prepared me for it. Even at the time that I was in college, I knew that I wanted to go into uh, journalism. I was interested. I was a mother of a toddler like you are now. At the time that Sesame Street was, was at its height, to keep my daughter occupied while I cleaned the house, cooked lunch, answered mail, washed the clothes, ironed the clothes, while I was doing all of the list of things I had to do. I had to amuse her. So I'd sit her in front when Sesame Street was on, She's fascinated. I was fascinated. How are these shows produced? How do they make it so interesting? What makes them catch the attention and hold the attention of a two-year-old? That was my fascination. But we were attracted by the same medium. So to answer your question, did I connect the dots? Yes. From that experience with my daughter watching her i was determined that i was going to have a career but i also knew in the back of my mind that at this point in our life my husband's um, building up the blocks towards his own career was uh, something that i had to support and it was it was a fun experience because you know how it is when you're in the states kayo lang, you only had each other to depend on in fact one of one of the the things that I remember so well is, you know, we were living in this tall apartment building when he was a student, right? You know, every time you fight, you you, you just want to get rid of him. <laughs> the only place I could go to was the top floor, which was the laundromat. Mm -hmm. That was all I could do. And when I got to the top floor, I had nobody to talk to except the machines that were running and, and drying our clothes. There I learned that, you know, you had to solve your own problems that you cannot run to some neighbor and ask for help. You had to be your own therapist or be your own uh, counselor. And then I had to go back to the apartment because there was nowhere else I could go. Make it up, talk about it because there was this baby to take care of. There was the grocery I had to go the next day. I had to cook the next meal because life had to go on. In that sense, yes, it's nice that you bring it up. You connect the dots. And when I got home, I promptly look for a job because I knew that I wanted to work and I wanted to have a career. I didn't know exactly what, but I knew the general direction and I was determined to go in that direction. Ang galing. I love it. I love the story and how I guess that also taught you, like you said, to just keep going, which I'm sure was very helpful, especially in yeah. the rough and tough days of probe. Yes. Yes, yes. In connecting the dots, the other dot that was there was, you know, this sense of love of country where you feel that you have a country that you love and want to help. It came along the way. In my past life, I was a member of the Bayanihan, which is a, a dance company, which teaches you uh, love of country in a very palpable way. You're dancing before audiences abroad and you hear them applauding you, appreciating your culture. And the rondalia usually strikes up the national anthem. And when they when they struck up the national anthem, I was peering from behind the, the curtains, and I could see all of the all of these faces that were you know foreign, not familiar. And it was a full house, and everybody was um, awaiting us. You know the feeling that uh, you're going to present something that represents your country. That was another dot that I wanted to pursue when we set up Rome. And when we were just beginning pro, you know, we were saying, how are we going to buy equipment, you know, uh, have the proper cameras and stuff like that. So my husband and I, my very supportive husband, thought we have some savings. And we poured our savings into the first camera, the first tripod, the first microphone set, the first boom mic of pro. That was how happen on a physical level. This is Pro, your Friday night news magazine for television. I am Cheche Lazaro, 
Good evening. Of course, probe, and you've used this term, I've heard it in interviews, there is the probe standard. And this is something you have passed on to all the amazing journalists and uh, eventual leaders that probe trained in their early days. Let me name a few. Karen Davila, Bernadette Sembrano, Howie Severino, Tony Velasquez, Pinky Webb. And these are just the on-cam ones. There are many, many more who became bosses in different um, departments eventually. I know that one of the most important things, and you've told me the story before, is talagang bawal tumanggap ng pera, bawal tumanggap ng envelope, even if sinabing pangkain or pang shopping, that was really like at the core. But aside from that, what would you say is that probe standard that has passed on from the different batches of everyone who passed through probe? The other word we always use is integrity. No? Integrity of the story that you don't make up facts. You, you don't produce sound bites just to make it sound better or handsomer or more palatable. Uh, you don't quote people out of context. It's all part of the integrity bar that what you're seeing is what it really is. It's not something we made up. It's not something that we fictionalized. It's not something that we are putting together uh, just because we want to or this is our best friend or because we like this particular candidate. So the way we we did the, the integrity aspect was we work as a team. We don't work as individuals. I mean, we, we have our individual input, but we are not the sole proprietor of the whole story. We're not a perfect team, but we try to put in um, a system that would help us check if we were doing our work. I think the term is psychological safety. I think I came across that term recently, meaning people feel safe enough to voice out their dissent or their opposing opinion or their thoughts within the team, kahit na medyo may banggaan. How did you, I guess, foster that in Probe? Since I was the head of the team, I said that my office door was an open door. I welcomed all comments. I did not close my door to certain people because I didn't want to hear what they had to say. It was a physically open door, but I also reiterated that it was an open door because I wanted to hear everybody's uh, sentiment. Uh, secondly, I, I told them I did not like the system uh, that you know I had experienced. As you go through life, you experience these things of backbiting and being nice to a person in front of him and then tearing him apart behind his back. I said, I would prefer as a system that if you have a conflict with another person, you face that person directly, just the two of you, don't involve anybody else, and resolve it if you can. But if you cannot resolve it, you have to agree that because you're teammates and that you have to work together, you will put that somewhere else. Then one thing which we established in Probe, and every Prober knows this, is we had a regular Monday meeting. Everybody had to come, whether you had a night, late night out, we instituted fines. We instituted all kinds of memos. At this meeting, we had a system of commenting about each show because at the end of the week, at one point, we had five shows. All five shows would have already aired. So we would comment on each show, what was good about it, what was bad about it. And the comments were very detailed. Like on the edit of this of Probe team last night, there was a black. So that means that the edit team missed out on one frame or somebody would comment like they didn't like the way I voiced a piece because it was it was too fast or it was uh, the pronunciation of the Tagalog word was not right or they would say that they repeated the video twice so these things you know they were very very detailed and everybody dreaded the meeting but when you talk to them now I think deep in their hearts they appreciated it because the next week the same thing would happen again so after a time you get used to it. And because of that openness that we engendered during the meetings, I think uh, people uh, began to appreciate the fact that if there's something wrong, you have to articulate it. Otherwise, you just have to hold your peace and not be able to express yourself. Ang galing. Thank you for your generosity in sharing that. And sometimes I guess it's overlooked. Parang we think automatic na kung may problema siya sa akin, kakausapin naman niya ako. Eh. Pero iba when you verbalize it and really I guess encourage that kind of culture within a company or organization. 
I'm sure we weren't perfect, <laughs> but you know, as imperfect as we were, we tried. Oh, I watched this interview of yours where you were asked what inspires you as a journalist. And you said, quote, getting the story, telling the story like it is, serving a public that deserves to know the real story behind the issues that we face. And I share that because I have a very important question I want to ask you that is, uh, I guess, a problem of a lot of us now. How do you shed any biases when looking at a story? You know, Bianca, there's no person that has no bias. All of us have biases. Like, I have a bias for you because of your effusive and open personality. I could have a bias for the color of what of your clothes now. Everybody has a bias. And the first thing about bias is you have to recognize it. You have to admit that you have a bias. And at the in the probe team, we admit that everybody has a bias, right? But the nice thing about it when you're working with a team is that every bias cuts into the next person's bias. Mm. Right? So if I'm at the shoot and I'm interviewing somebody that I'm so irritated with or somebody who is not giving me the answers that are that I perceive to be truthful, the cameraman isn't going to change his angle and do a extremely low angle to make him look like a monster. He's not going to do that. I'm not sure if the writer of the script is going to prejudice her script by introducing her own bias, right? The editor that cuts the piece together, I can go and watch the edit and maybe comment on the edit, but she cannot change the answer of the person. And she cannot change... The question that I put in, because it will be there, unless a scriptwriter removed my question and put in a voiceover that was the exact opposite. It is now my option as a reporter. Am I going to include that voiceover or not? So the judgments of different people with different biases or maybe the same bias, I don't know, cuts into the piece and contributes to the piece, contributes to the, to the, um, the wealth and the depth of the piece that you're putting together. Totally, 100%. I guess one thing for me that I feel the whole probe profile has contributed is a generation of critical thinkers. Would you agree? I hope so because, you know, when you talk about millennials, some of them don't even remember that we once walked this earth, this uh, television <laughs> earth, right? Because we, we're already part of the past. But I hope that with our archives, I was telling you earlier that we do have a very deep archival library, 30 years old or even more than 30 years old because I think our library started during the Edsa Revolution. So all of that is really the first draft of history. All of the material that we have and all of the events that transpired during that time are all in the archives and we're very proud of them because now we're, we're able to mine it. When we look back, for example, what's happening today has a history in the past. Now, today just didn't happen. We have come to this point because of past events in our Philippine history. So with the archival material, you can go all the way back and trace it to some point where it all began. And then you can say, what did we do wrong or what did we do right? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Is it a I, I, all, Bianca? I guess I wanted to go to that critical thinking question because now again I refer to the social media age it's so easy eh? you see a news item you see something you react and talk right away and it's just a lot of noise so how do you think we can encourage more critical thinking at a time like this social media is a uh, double-edged sword right it can cut one way by uh, propagating all kinds of uh, fake news it can also cut the, the other way, where because you have so much information, there are two points that can happen. One is you have information overload, so that it's like, I, I don't want to listen anymore. It's just too much. But there's the other half, where because of all of the information that comes your way and different sources, right? You're able to sharpen your discernment. You're able to study and try to sift through the material to determine who's... Now, now who's... Who's pulling our leg? Who's telling the truth? And where is the middle ground where 
truth has to lie somewhere in the middle ground. It can't be all the way to the right or all the way to the left. Because we do know that as people, we did say earlier, we do have biases. And your biases come up, come, come into it. No, If it's a story about Mr. X, we don't like this Mr. X. So anything he says is really not acceptable. The truth is somewhere in between. There might be a kernel of truth in what he's saying. And you have to discern it by looking at other sources to help you affirm what is being said or to have you reject the material. But it's tedious, Bianca, because they're, they're just so much material. And because there's a lot of material, there's, there's a lot that you can mine for your own discernment. When we were operating, we were part of traditional media. We were like the gatekeepers, diba? Right? Only this story can come in. This story, no, 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 hindi pwede to. We were that. But now there's no such thing. That there, yes. There's no gatekeeper. Um, it's a long process. It's a tedious process. But there's really no more traditional media to speak of. Yeah. It's been challenged from all sides. But I love hearing your point of view because there's so much knowledge, there's so much wisdom and tools that were present in producing traditional news stories that can definitely be, definitely be applied to this new landscape of sharing information. Yeah, I hope so. History does repeat itself. The persons just change. The sound bites are the same. Yeah. And the story flow is the same. Sad, right? Very sad. It's like we never learn. It's like, where have we been? <laughs> oh, time, di ba nagawa na natin to? Di ba na pagdaanan na natin to? <laughs> Oh, no, na benta na yan. Bakit natin inuulit ito? Uh, but that's why it's so inspiring and empowering to hear the story of how you continue to put out stories. And I wanted to end with this because your journey has taken you in many, many different paths. And a lot of people who are watching and listening are in that, that space, trying to figure out where they're supposed to go. So what would your advice be to everyone watching and listening to help figure out what they're meant to do and the path they are supposed to take? Don't be impatient with yourself because even if you are a late bloomer, you will bloom as long as you have an objective in mind. And I'd like to suggest an objective. I'm into love of country because I have seen in my career as a journalist and as a Filipino, truly this country is worth giving it our best, whatever it is. In all the stories that we have done on Probe, there is one uh, conclusion that I have come to. The Filipinos are exceptional in many ways, really exceptional. And we have come across many of them who have sacrificed, who have given of themselves to make this country a better place to, to, to live and to be a part of. Love of country is such a big concept. And many people will say, you know, I, yeah, love of country. How, how can you love your country? In, in small ways and big ways. In small ways by being a, uh, a citizen that cares about this country. The first thing is, please vote next year because it is your chance to make your stand known. What do you stand for? Anong paninindigan mo sa buhay? What do you want for this country? All of the other countries around us have moved forward. And I personally think that the Filipino excels, is excellent over and above all of those who have moved ahead of us. Funny as it may seem, that is my staunch belief. And that you have to begin by appreciating the country that you were born into. I've seen it in, in pockets all over, in the stories that we do, in the people that we meet, and in people like you, in young people like you, Bianca. The hope is there, and we must never lose hope. You know why? It's the only country we have. And as a last point, we all, even if we do have different walks of life, different careers, different profiles we all share one thing and that's the filipino name filipino <sighs> so nice talking to you i am so inspired never not inspired by you and your stories thank, thank you, you yeah. so much ma'am cheche maraming maraming salamat and yes please register to vote and vote wisely next year thank you bianca my pleasure